Hi, I'm Tom Long, and this week on Island Meditations, we're at a place I've never been before. <laughs> this is the Ocean Isle uh, Nature Trail, and um, there's really no good place to park at the trailhead, so I'm not sure what they're wanting you to do, but you could probably park on the street out, out in front of the houses at the trailhead. Uh, they're doing construction there right now. Anyway, <laughs> the topic for this week is... Um, what is the most important Bible passage for the new believer? And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about three bonus tips, if you will, with regard to the most important passage. In order to explain that, I want to start by telling you a little story about playing the guitar. Let's go for a walk. And let's talk and let's think about what is the most important passage for the new believer. Almost 60 years ago, after saving lawn mowing money for months, I had enough money to buy my first guitar. It was a no-name cheapo starter guitar, but I loved it. And I've kept it all these years. My dad took me to lessons for several months. I learned a few chords and in school, I learned to read music, but despite playing for years, I never felt like I was very good. Finally, literally after decades, I decided to focus on playing along with recordings, and I discovered something disconcerting. I had next to no rhythm. <laughs> working on rhythm, working with a metronome and backing tracks, over time, elevated my playing to the next level. And by that, I mean the level above awful. In music, tempo and rhythm are the backbone upon which the rest of a song is built. To set the metronome, I have to know the beats per minute, or BPM, in which the song is to be played. If I know the rate of the beats and I stay on the beat, lesser mistakes are less likely to distract from the beauty of the music. Have you ever been to a concert or a church service where everyone is clapping along to the music, if there's that one person near you that is out of sync with everyone else, it can be very jarring, can't it? <laughs> if you think of the people of God as being a band of sisters and brothers, there are three important steps to getting in sync with God's will for God's people. In music, you need to know the BPM, the beats per minute. In our faith walk, we also need to know the BPM. Only now, instead of beats per minute, B is for Bible, P is for prayer, and M is for meditation. I'll come back to B is for Bible in just a second. But first, let's talk about prayer. Last week we learned that eternal life, as Jesus used the phrase, meant to be in a relationship with God through Jesus, to know God like you know a good friend. And as we all know, an important part of any relationship is communication. Prayer sounds so churchy and theological, but in the Bible, it's simply a conversation between God and God's people. Different denominations state their doctrine of the Bible of Scripture in diverse ways, but we agree that the Bible is the primary way God has chosen to speak to God's people. Studying the Bible is one way we listen to God's side of the conversation. So B is for Bible. The third component needed for growing our faith is M for meditation. It isn't enough to just read the Bible. We have to meditate on what it says, what it means. Have you ever talked to someone about something that was important to you, but their mind was elsewhere? Their ears were working, and the sound of your voice was being received by some part of their brain. But the meaning behind your words, the heart, the feeling that was wrapped up in what you were saying was completely missed. Meditation is the opposite of that kind of listening. Meditation is reflecting not just on what the Bible says or what it meant to the original audience, but what does it mean to us and our relationship with God and others today. The Bible, prayer, and meditation, BPM, are the foundation on which our faith will be built, which leads me to what, in my opinion, 
is the most important passage for a new believer to know. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The reason this passage is so critical is because of the light it sheds on how we study the Bible and pray and guides the direction of our meditation on any and every passage of the Bible or what it is that we think God is saying to us in our time of prayer. Jesus himself tells us that the top two commands of God are that we love God and that we love our neighbor. But not only are these the top two commands, not only are they ground zero for launching your relationship with the Lord, they are also the key that unlocks the rest of our understanding of the Bible. Jesus said, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So as we read what God is saying to us in scripture, we ask ourselves, how can what God is saying to me in my Bible study and prayer time help me to increase in my love of God and my love of my neighbor? If you don't see how that passage can help increase your love, that's okay. We don't send first graders to calculus classes. First, we teach addition and subtraction. If you can't connect what the Bible is saying to growing in your love for God and your love for all people, give it time. As we walk with God, not only will we find that more and more of what the Bible says will fall into place in our hearts and our minds, but even in old and familiar passages, we will be surprised to learn that God has something new to say to us because we are at a different place in our lives. But whatever we learn, we test against whether what we think the Bible is saying to us is consistent with loving God and loving our neighbor. BPM, we read the Bible, we pray, we have conversations with God where we speak to God and we listen to God. We meditate on what God is saying to us, just like one might shine a flashlight on a book to read it in the dark. We see what God is saying more clearly when we shine the light of the two most important commandments on what God is saying to us. How can what we are hearing help us to grow in our love for God and in our love for others? All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Thank you for joining me this week on Island Meditations. I hope you found our discussion to be helpful. If you happen to have a different thought about the most important Bible passage for the new believer, um, please leave that. Someone might find that helpful. Please leave that in a comment uh, below. And also, I've had a comment that uh, someone wasn't being notified that there were new videos coming out. But if you click on the bell, the notification bell, then you'll get a notification from YouTube whenever a new video comes out, which is usually on Saturdays if you just want to go looking for it. Anyway, thank you so much for being with me. I hope God blesses your Bible study, your prayer time, and your meditation in such a way that you grow in your love for God and your love for your neighbor. Have a great week. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And He walks with me And He talks with me And He tells me I am His own